Hello everybody! Welcome to Social Studies. Um, I am excited to t tell you guys about a new person, or really it's two people that we're learning about today, and how they helped their communities. Um, before I introduce who these two people are, um, I first want you to understand what's going on um, in their lives and just kind of the context. So you just understand better before we read the book what is happening and why, okay? So we're going to be learning about migrant workers or farm workers in mostly California, okay? Um, and so what are migrant workers and farm workers? Well, a migrant worker is a person who moves from moves to another area to find a job and usually it's it's seasonal so for each season so maybe in the summer they might be one place um, they might be somewhere else for the winter or for the fall or for the spring right so depending on the season or maybe it's just for just a little bit of time they're working here and then they'll work somewhere else um, later on so that's a migrant worker they're moving around to find their jobs right they're not just staying in one place in one job the whole time okay um and then there's also farm workers which sometimes can be the same um and they're just people who work on farms right they help with farm far, different farm work um and in california who are these who are these workers usually because it's not always but the the majority of these workers happen to be uh, people who come from the country of mexico um, but others include people who are from countries such as Jamaica or Haiti or Guatemala or Honduras or Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic and sometimes from, uh, from other states in the United States. Okay, so these are the people who are working here um, as migrant workers and farm workers. And then reasons for why they're working there. Okay, um, because these workers usually don't get paid the best and their work is very hard. Um, so you might be wondering why don't they just get a job that pays more money or um, what's making them work here as, as, a, as a farm worker or a migrant worker. And many of these workers are immigrants who, an immigrant is someone who leaves their country where they were born and goes to another country. And usually they leave these countries because they want to give their their families a better life whether it's to have enough food to eat or to be able to just make more money in general because um, maybe their their country um, there's not as much opportunities um, maybe it's because it's unsafe in the country that they they were living in and so they leave to these other countries to help their families have a better life um, and again, many of these people who are leaving are and leave their countries to go here. And the United States is not the only place where people go and in, and migrate to. But um, the United States is one place where people come sometimes for in search of a better life. And um, many of these people happen to be undocumented. What does that mean? It means the Government doesn't know necessarily that they're here. They just came on their own to find this better life. Um, and so because the government doesn't know and they don't have the certain papers that say, yep, they're U.S. citizens, the jobs are, are not as, they don't have as many job opportunities. They can just go get any job they want. Um, and so it just makes it harder. They usually have to, get jobs that um where they don't have to have their the papers that they need um because again they're undocumented and so um these are the people that you're going to learn about are um are people who helped these workers some one of them is a worker who um worked as a migrant worker and one of them is someone who helped these people um and has very similar experiences so i'm excited for you guys to learn about these two people and what did they do to help their community of migrant workers and farm workers okay so this book is called side by side lado a lado and it's a story about <clears throat> cesar chavez and dolores huerta and so we're going to learn about both of these two people
and see how do they help their communities. Alrighty. In New Mexico, there lived a little girl named Dol Dolores who talked so fast that her grandmother once said, Dolores, you must have seven tongues. By the way, New Mexico is a state in the United States. It's not the country of Mexico. It's a state in the United States called New Mexico. Many miles away in Arizona, also a state in the United States, there lived a boy named Cesar, who was ve a very good listener. Cesar listened to his mother cry when his family lost its home and they had to become migrant farm workers. So two different people and two different families. When Dolores was a girl, she moved to California with her mother and brothers. She joined the Girl Scouts and worked to raise money for soldiers fighting in World War II. Cesar's family moved to California to follow the crops and work in the fields. Although he had to drop out of school to work, Cesar had a book under his, always had a book under his arm. <clears throat> so he couldn't go to school because he was too busy helping his family work and get money that they needed to survive. But you see, he still appreciated reading and learning. From her mother, Dolores learned to think of others. When poor farm work worker families had no place to sleep, Dolores' mother would help them stay at her hotel for free. Life for Cesar's family was difficult. All day they bent over in the hot sun picking lettuce, strawberries, and grapes. There was never enough water to drink out in the fields. Dolores grew up and became a teacher. She saw the farm worker children come to school cold and barefoot, too hungry to learn as well as they could. When Cesar grew up, he and his friends were hurt by dangerous tools and had mean bosses who sprayed the plants with poisons that made the farm workers sick. Then something special happened. Dolores and Cesar met. Dolores saw that Cesar had great faith. His dreams would be, bring hope to thousands of farm workers. Cesar saw that Dolores had great courage. She would stand up and fight for what was right. Side by side, Dolores and Cesar began their journey. So finally, these two different people met. Let's see what they do together. Dolores and Cesar drove from town to town, standing on the back of flatbed trucks and inviting farm workers to join La Causa, or the cause, for justice. Together, they demanded better living and working conditions for farm workers. So they're saying, hey, we need to be paid more. Farm workers need to be paid more and they needed to be treated better. Cesar and Dolores asked people to stop buying grapes from California because the poisons the growers used there were making the work, worker, workers sick. People listened and the grapes rotted on the vines. So since nobody was buying them, the people were not making money off of them. So they had to say, okay, if people are not gonna buy our stuff, we might need to change the way we do things. The farm workers won. They got a safer place to work and the grapes became safer for people to eat. So these people started listening to them. They're like, okay, if we can't make money, then we need to start listening to you guys. Cesar led men, women, and children on a 340-mile march to demand that workers get paid enough to live on. They arrived in Sacramento, California on April 10th, Dolores' birthday. Dolores gave an amazing speech, and, people, and the people were heard. The growers signed a contract with the workers, giving them better pay for their hard work. It was time for the farm workers to share in the harvest. So they marched, she gave a speech, and they listened, and they helped give better pay for them. Though they each had a large family, little food, and no money, when Dolores and Cesar sat down at Cesar's kitchen table, they always looked for ways to make the world a better place. If we don't help the farm workers, Cesar asked Dolores, who will? So he's saying, if nobody's going to do it, we are. We're going to take care of them. 
When the growers and the politicians wouldn't listen, so these people who were in charge making the decisions, if they would not listen, Cesar stopped eating for 36 days so that others would understand how important it was to protect the workers. When their bosses bullied them, the workers used to say, we, can, we can't do it. We can't win. But with the help of Dolores, they began to chant, Si se puede. Yes, we can. So she gave them hope to say, hey, we can change things. There's things we can do as citizens to help change things. For 30 years, Dolores and Cesar worked and listened and talked and marched side by side. Dolores and Cesar worked to help families stay together. They fought to pass the Immigration Act of 1986 that helped more than a million immigrants become U.S. citizens. Because remember, that means they, they got their documents to say, yep, they're a citizen here in the United States. Dolores and Cesar had many victories because they knew that together, all things were possible. In 1993, Cesar passed away and Dolores and the farm workers marched to honor him. So unfortunately, Cesar has, has passed away already. Dolores still works and marches for justice for the poor, and she's not alone. The spirit of Cesar Chavez is with her, by her side. So she still marches and tries to help people who are poor and are farm workers. She still helps them out. All right, guys, that was the story of Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta. And I want you to think, what did they do to help their communities? Well, they came together and they marched. They gave speeches. They talked to other people about um, things they could do to help change the laws, right? And they did this all by gathering people for a cause. They said, hey, this is an important cause. Come with us. Join us. Do these things with us so we can make a change. So what I want you to do today is on Seesaw, you're going to draw a picture of people coming together for a cause, okay? So you're just going to be drawing people, joining together, and working for a cause, okay? And then we're going to be talking next week about what some causes are that we can join and things that we can do, okay, guys? So again, go on to Seesaw, draw a picture of people joining together for a cause. Maybe they're holding hands. Maybe they're marching together. Either way, they are all coming together for one cause. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about these two amazing people and what they have done to help their communities and are still doing to help their communities.